Hey, welcome to video three of the Rider Revolution <laughs> video series. <laughs> and uh, in video one, we briefly talked about uh, very common seat mistakes, seat problems, and why they are problems. And video two, we talked a little bit about lunge lessons to develop the seat, pros and cons, you know, pitfalls, and so on. And in this video, I want to talk about um, yeah, seat corrections that might actually make your ride worse. Right? Um, yeah, not all seat corrections are helpful or useful. Um, what what I'm you know what I've noticed or what I'm noticing more and more over the years is that uh, a lot of teaching around the seat and discussions around the seat treat the seat in a very static way, as if we were you know sitting on a statue you know and where nothing moves. And that tends to introduce stiffness and rigidity into the rider and into the horse. And that's a, that's a big problem because, of course, everything is moving, should move. All the joints in the horse's body and rider's body should move um, to have a flowing, harmonious you know, symbiosis, really, between horse and rider. And uh, a lot of the, the, the typical seat corrections are... Um, very static in nature, like if the right, um, teacher tells the student to sit still, for example, that uh, is usually a disaster because it makes riders brace. They try not to move and as a result they bounce out of the saddle right? because the, the horse's back kind of pushes them out and they can't absorb the movement. Or <clears throat> same thing if the, rider tell, uh, the teacher tells the rider to hold their hands still or keep their legs still stuff like that it always leads to to more bracing so I mean the if the hands or legs are noisy it's because part of the rider's body is stiff and, and locked up usually the hip joints right and um, if one joint isn't moving enough other joints have to work overtime so to speak and now if you try to force yourself to hold the noisy body part still then you create another layer of tension and bracing on top of the old layer of tension and bracing. It's just now you're bracing another body part too. It's instead of bracing just with your hips, now you're bracing with your, your hand muscles, arm muscles, leg muscles and so on in, a, in addition. So it gets basically worse and worse. You get stiffer and stiffer, which makes the horse stiffer and stiffer. Um, a lot of the, the typical seat corrections also aim at um, creating a shape um, and creating a you know, superficial form rather than uh, starting out maybe with where are you supported, how, how are you supporting yourself in the saddle and uh, how does the horse respond if you change your alignment, like if you lean forward or back or left and right, if you rotate your pelvis left or right. What does that mean for the horse? How does the horse respond? Does it get better? Does it get worse? And, and so on. So <clears throat> if you start with that support base and then uh, make deliberate changes mm, in your seat, like lean forward, lean back, turn left, turn right, shift the weight to the left seat bone, to the right seat bone, and so on, and observe the horse, then you're really starting with the function and see how do my movements influence the horse and uh, where does the horse feel the best? You know, you can adjust the body in three dimensions essentially and there's always a, these, these binary oppositions. I can lean forward or back, I can lean left or right, I can rotate left or right, I can sit more on the left, more on the right. It's always these you know, two options and then you can go from one extreme to the other very slowly and then you can let the horse show you where he feels most comfortable, right? And by by doing that, you will find that you, as you as you go with um, the option that the horse prefers, you find that your seat starts to look more correct and uh, more better aligned, more vertical, straighter, etc. And um, because you're looking at influ the influence you have on the horse, you become mobile. You don't run the risk of, of locking up and bracing as much as if you start with am I sitting straight and uh, am I sitting still you know so because the, the reality is that the, the seat only looks still but in um, you're actually moving a lot to appear 
still. Yeah, in, in addition then, you know, there is also, you know, incorrect instruction, of course. Some, some teachers just simply will tell you the wrong things, like they will tell you to rotate your femurs to the outside and take your knees off or whatever, and then that leads to a um, poor alignment of the rider's bones, so to speak, and then you can't absorb the movement of the horse's back, like rotating your femurs out blocks the hip joints, and then you can't swing up and down in your pelvis in the trot and the canter, and then you end up bracing and, and becoming stiff, and then you're in inhibiting the horse's movement. Yeah, so um, beware of, of instruction that tries to get you into a superficial shape or that tries to um, make you, you know, conform to some sort of cookie cutter outline and yeah, makes you stiff in the, uh, in the long run. And um, yeah, beware of instructions that make it more difficult to feel the horse or to influence the horse. Any, anything that makes it more difficult to feel what the horse is doing underneath you and makes it more difficult to influence the horse is probably not correct. Yeah. So in the next video, we're going to talk about DIY seat lessons. Yeah. How you can how you can do this yourself. Yeah. How you can basically exactly. yeah become your own seat coach. Yeah, exactly. If so you don't we have, have some ideas and yeah. suggestions and yeah. tips for you. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. See you then. We'll see you in video number four. <laughs> Bye.